And that is the documentary that we're featuring this week with, uh, with short clips uh, during 100 Huntley Street. Uh, but on Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on CTS, or streamed live. Also, if you have the internet, if you don't uh, get CTS, you can see the full it. hour, one hour documentary. Right online. And so it, it's a great opportunity you can look forward to. Uh, but why don't we uh, jump right into one of the clips as we kind of uh, want to get an understanding of, of, uh, of the Bible in a fresh way. And maybe perhaps for those who, who don't take it off the shelf too often, it'll, it, it's a great uh, overview of uh, all that the Bible is. Watch this. Some of the Bible's most difficult passages to interpret are found in Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I interpret uh, the creation account that we have in Genesis chapters 1 and 2 as a very bold theological statement that God is the one, there's only one God, God is the creator of the cosmos. And the creation was done in a step-by-step, -step, orderly fashion and each step was done right and was good. And when God finally, I call it terraforming, when he finally got this planet just right, that's when humanity came on the scene. We sometimes we confuse facts and truth. You can have a big mass of facts and very little truth. The Bible is actually both. Um, it's a reliable guide to, to just about everything, but of course it's, uh, it's something that you have to read in context. You have to understand when it was written and what they were trying to say. The writers in Genesis were not trying to, you know, debate uh, Einstein or Newton. They were trying to put forth um, uh, a creative accounting of how God created the universe. Some critics have called the Bible sexist, citing the Genesis story of man's creation. I think that one of the most profound truths that one can grapple with in the book of Genesis is the role of men and women. The Hebrew scholars, uh, the rabbis, for instance, point out that the creation of woman is not from a bone from the top of man's head, lest she be above man, nor is she created from a bone from his foot, lest she be under man, rather a rib from his side. The role of women is to be alongside of, of man at all times. That right in the beginning of the Bible, establishes the partnership of men and women, the equality of men and women, alongside of, not above, not below, alongside of. This is a kind of a revolutionary insight given the time in which it was written. Do I think God is sexist? No. Um, do I think the Bible has been used in ways that have repressed women? Yes. Do I think that was God's intent? No. God is leading culture but he's also fully engaged in culture. And much of the Bible was written to highly patriarchal societies where women were chattel. But I think in God engaging, you could see how he values women um, in ways that is leading the culture to be um, more egalitarian. You can come to passages uh, in, the, uh, in the New Testament uh, where it looks like it's sexist. Uh, Paul's comments about women remaining silent in church. Uh, if you understood the context in which he said those things, uh, you would understand that he wasn't sexist at all. As a matter of fact, all through uh, the Pauline writings and the Gospels itself, you, you find the equality of women. I think that uh, anybody who studies the Bible with any degree of conscientious commitment will come away with the sense that the Bible, perhaps, is the major force for establishing the equality of women in the world today. Um, when I think of what other uh, sacred scriptures do to women and what the Bible does to women, there is no comparison. I hope you can see that these documentaries, all of them, are labors of love. Cheryl Weber was just telling me that the beautiful northern lights, you saw the stars and the color in the sky, that's not stock footage. That was shot by uh, Christopher Stacy on our famous red camera with the camera, the time lapse, and uh, that was northern Quebec. Mm. It was uh, one of Cheryl's shoots. So, yeah, these are very dear to us, mm -hmm. near and dear, and very profoundly meaningful in their messaging. Well, we trust that by the end of the whole hour of the documentary, you will really get a, an in-depth understanding of the 
importance of the Bible, how it has shaped our society, how it continues to, and how it, it is God's very words breathed to us. What a gift that is. Now, some of you may remember A.J. Jacobs, who made headlines when he decided to spend a year following every single rule in the Bible as literally as possible. Very unusual. He chronicled his findings in the best-selling book, The Year of Living Biblically. Now, this was definitely a controversial journey, but let's hear what he had to say as part of our documentary. I wanted to live by every piece of advice, every rule in the Bible without picking and choosing because I wanted to see what parts of the Bible are relevant and what parts are, are not. I was in Central Park, I was wearing my uh, robe and sandals. A guy came up to me and said, why are you dressed like that? I explained, I'm trying to follow all the rules of the Bible from the Ten Commandments to stoning adulterers. He said, I'm an adulterer, you can stone me. I said, that'd be great. And I took out a handful of pebbles that I had been carrying around for this purpose. He grabbed one of the pebbles out of my hand and threw them at my face. So I thought, an eye for an eye, also in the Hebrew scriptures, I could throw one back at him. So that's how I checked that off the list. Even with his tongue-in-cheek approach, A.J. learned a great deal from his year of living biblically. Well, the Bible Project was the most life-changing year of my existence. So uh, it's influenced me. I'm still filled with gratitude. Um, I still try to observe the Sabbath because I think the idea of a sanctuary in time, as one rabbi called it, uh, this uh, one day a week where you take stock and be thankful, that's a wonderful thing. Um, I think that I sin less. I still sin. I still lie and gossip and covet all the time, but less, maybe 40% less. So I'm taking baby steps. Everyone picks and chooses. So it's a question of what are you going to pick and what are you going to choose? And typically what we do is we pick the texts that support our denominational background, our tradition, or maybe our ide ideology. And A.J. Jacobs made people uncomfortable with what he wore and what he did to his body. He made his wife uncomfortable with kind of the, the various ways that his lifestyle, his um, biblical living affected her and their family. And I think um, he was trying to say, we need to live in ways that we can respect our neighbor, love our neighbor, and get along. And um, I, I, I wish more Christians or more students of Scripture uh, followed that example. A.J. Jacobs, quite an unusual guy. He doesn't claim to be a follower of Jesus, but he just said, well, it's, you know, the Bible's supposed to be so important. Why don't I just try to try some of this stuff. actually live every, every single uh, law in it? And he goes through the Old Testament and so on. So kind of doing things a little out of context and a little, a little crazy, but we thought, you know, that would be part of the documentary just to give kind of a, a side of the Bible where, where people uh, sometimes go a, a little too far. <laughs> So uh, very interesting, even even humorous in what he uh, he came up with. Yeah, I mean, not just academia in this documentary. Some yeah. fun, some real smiles. But in this section, I think we're going to get a focus on what's the main thing as we look at the Bible. While debate continues about the specifics of interpretation, perhaps the most obvious question is, what is the Bible's main message? I think the main message is love, not only God's love, but uh, that you should love other people too. The main message of the Bible would be God's pursuit for his people, just how he always pursues them, even though they reject him a lot and they fail him a lot, he will always just keep pursuing them. God's redemption, God's love, God working and inter projecting himself into the lives of his creation to bring them back to the relationship that he originally established uh, in the Garden of Eden so long ago. The main message is redemption. Um, Jesus Christ died for our sin to save all humanity. God is love. Uh, I think that it's, it's throughout scripture. Uh, I think from beginning to end, from Genesis to Revelation, uh, Old Testament, New Testament, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can see the grace of God and God's love uh, kind of tethered throughout uh, the books of the Bible. The Bible tells us a lot about human beings, who we really are, and I think the Bible hits the nail right on the head. 
We were made in God's image, so we have so many things that we share with God, our intelligence, our interests, our love for this and that, our ability to appreciate beauty, and we also have a free will. We can think about things, we can make decisions. I think the message of the Bible, the dominant, ruling, basic message of the Bible, that we're called by God to run God's world as God's agents, and I got that from the first page of the Bible. I think that's the most sublime mandate that humans can imagine. It's a message of love for every human being who has ever lived, from the God who created them, who knows them intimately, and who desperately wants them to know how much he loves them. What could ever be more relevant than that? Literally nothing. And that main message of God's word is highlighted in my Easter card, thank you, Judy. Romans 6, verse 4. Just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. And you know the way to that is simply surrendering this dead spirit, this, this life that'll never be all it's meant to be apart from the Creator to Him and asking Jesus to come, forgive our sins, and take control. That's when new life begins. Maybe this will be your day. Mm -hmm. It's all about a, a relationship with God that, that he has uh, wanted with us from the beginning. And the Bible is a great part of that relationship because it's, it's his words to us and that we need to, to learn and study and, and digest and just reflect on. His love letter. Yeah. And so the Bible and you documentary is one way uh, we're doing that. We're helping you do that at Crossroads.